Hubris, the VR game that set people's YouTube feeds alight with creators calling it the most insane VR graphics they have ever seen. Saying things like it was the most realistic looking game in VR. In today's video, I'm going to tell you if Hubris is simply an overhyped, vain experience with very little substance or it is actually the real deal. Can this game deliver a meaningful VR gaming experience with such fantastic graphics? All those questions answered and more on today's video. And if you enjoy my content, be sure to leave a like and subscribe as I have lots more VR to show you. Let's get into it. The story sees you play a new recruit of the Triple O, AKA the Order of Objectivity. Together with pilot Lucia, you are sent to a planetoid belt to search for the mysterious agent Cyana. While there, you meet some enemies who love the color pink, and for some reason, they are terraforming the planet. Basically, you have to stop the enemy, blow stuff up, save Cyana, and kill everything. Let's start on the positives. It's easy to see that Hubris is a good looking game. In fact, it's a very good looking game. I found myself at times pretty wowed by what developers Cyborn have achieved with what looks to be their very first VR game, according to their official website. The attention to detail is beyond what most indie studios could ever manage. The weapons, the weird green crystals you find later on in levels, and even the floor can be impressive. The lighting and the water at times can be extremely impactful. And I think it'd be very hard to find someone who is not impressed by the opening underwater scene. But what about the gameplay? The gameplay loop, I'm pleased to say, is actually good, but it isn't amazing. I say loop because you shoot things, you collect stuff, you upgrade, you start again. The action is satisfying, and for those of you with B-haptic suits, the integration is pretty spectacular. The game can be played standing and seated easily, and all regular comfort options are available. The enemies can unfortunately get a little bit boring to look at sometimes, but in the four and a half hours it took me to complete the game, I was actually happy overall. There are times, and I may regret saying this, I felt like I was actually playing the original Halo. And I'm not sure why, but I think there's moments when everything simply lines up. The looks, the music, and the action, and you get like a glimpse that you're playing something really special. But, and there is always a but, there are issues to be found. And the high presentation now acts as a double-edged sword. You see, when a game looks almost triple A in quality, your brain expects high quality interactions and a physical presence. And this is where looks can be a little bit deceiving because the underlying framework simply can't match up to the looks. The game crashed only once for me, which I thought was pretty impressive. The weapons can feel solid against most of the environment, but for some reason will pass through your hands, as do some objects you pick up. You'll also find yourself doing a lot of climbing, which is actually good for the most part, but can be glitchy. The game features a vault mechanic to make it easy for you to mantle the environment, even with one hand, as long as it is highlighted in blue. But sometimes it throws you in directions you don't want, such as into exposed electrical cables above your head, or a random corner of the game that you're simply never meant to be in. And when that happens, you die instantly. You cannot turn during climbing, leaving you no choice but to physically spin and sometimes your hands will not know where to go next. You'll see a blue line, you'll try to grab it and for some reason your hand simply won't stick and therefore preventing you from moving on until eventually it does stick. Some rocks or areas you aren't meant to climb are more like holograms than actual rocks. If you attempt to step into them, you'll simply just float through them. The AI can be impressive and also non-existent which makes it easy for you to manipulate. And lastly, there is sometimes a lack of direction. Your adventure buddy, the AI ball, will simply wander off talking to itself about what you're doing next and what she's looking at. That then leaves you hopefully stumbling onto your objective that you'll need to do to proceed. Now, I personally love collecting crap in games, and this game definitely scratches that itch. There is a lot of extra rooms and directions you can walk, literally to find more stuff to upgrade your weapons. The need to collect everything in one area to proceed can also be annoying. There's one part in the game where you need to learn recycling and upgrading, but if you can't find one single thing out of the massive shopping list, you can't progress, which kills a bit of freedom of choice. If the objective is to simply teach, give the player what they need very easily, and then allow them the freedom to enjoy the upgrading process. I also found this game a bit of a platformer. There's lots and lots of jumping, and I personally really enjoyed that as well. The swimming parts of the game are beautiful, and it feels really good. There's only a handful of games that I've played over the years where swimming was so memorable in VR, and this is definitely one of them. 
In the game you only have one gun, but it transforms into three different weapons. A pistol, which is what you'll start with, a submachine gun, and a shotgun. I quickly realised there isn't much point using the submachine gun and the shotgun because the pistol is just so damn good. Each time you upgrade it, the ammo count and the damage increases, making it easy to ignore the other weapons. The only reason that I ever looked at the other guns was to simply watch the gun transform in my hand. The reload system itself is pretty boring, but it is functional. Holding a really cool futuristic gun to your ear, simply to wait for it to reload, I find pretty unengaging and uninspiring. The voice acting is okay, but the characters can feel sometimes a bit lifeless. They often talk to someone who isn't there and get stuck if you don't do the exact thing or stand in an exact place to trigger them to move on with the story. While writing this review, I've now realized that I can't remember a single piece of music. I'm not saying there isn't music, but I just didn't find any of it memorable. Now, with all that being said, I enjoyed my time with Hubris, and maybe I've been pretty unforgiving in my review today, but I want players to be aware we are not in Half-Life Alex territory. At $40, I would expect a premium game, and as stated earlier, it looks better than it plays. I want developer Cyborn to be proud of what they've achieved, especially visually, but now they have the visuals down, as a developer, it's time to focus on writing, gameplay, interactions, characters, player presence, to give your game some soul. This is a very high quality indie game and comes with my recommendation of a purchase, but keep your expectations in check and be ready to have some buggy moments. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, slap that like button, subscribe for more virtuality content, and I'll see you on the next video.